I'm Kathleen Clawson, the Artistic Director of Dayton Opera, and on this installment of Coffee with Kathleen, I'll be having a conversation with my good friend, the countertenor John Holliday, who's here presenting a recital with Dayton Opera. I'm so excited to introduce my very dear friend, John Holliday. John, welcome to Dayton. Thank so you. excited, well, almost to Dayton. Um, so <laughs> excited to have you, to be able to present you in concert. Um, so you and I met in 2011, a few we years did. back, when you were an apprentice in Santa Fe. And, yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I often tell people that, you know, the, the Santa Fe Opera Apprenticeship Program is, is the, you know, one of the biggies. And, it is. And uh, throughout the, my 20 years there, every year of the 30 to 40 apprentices there'll be one or two frankly standouts mm -hmm. where i go that person that person mm -hmm. they're they're special and the world is going to see it so of course mm -hmm. you're one of those people mm -hmm. and i'm so pleased that um your career is is that the rest of the world is seeing what I always already knew. Yes. That, that, and that, that you're getting a, a bigger audience for your artistry. That's so, yeah. So tell us a little bit about what you're gonna be singing for us. I'm excited, I'm so excited to come to Dayton. I haven't been to Dayton since I was in graduate school at the University of Cincinnati, uh, an old story. You know, AirTran used to be an airline that flew out of Dayton. So because I was cheap, but I still like first class seats, <laughs> AirTran offered really great first class seats for very cheap. And I would drive in and out from Cincinnati to Dayton to fly home. Uh, but it's, I've never, I think I've sung in Dayton, never. So this is my very first time to actually come to Dayton to sing. I'm looking forward to being back in Ohio and being in a place where I know that people are going to really appreciate what, what I bring to the table or to the stage on, on the third. And I'm just excited for the recital to be, as we were talking about a little bit before, a lot of people are still coming to know me, but one of the very things that is so important to me is love and giving love and receiving love. And so what you'll notice about this recital is that there are actually gonna be little moments in each set that talk about love love of nature, love of a significant other, love of oneself and one's heritage and one's culture. And for me, because I am a Christian, the love of the Lord. So that is also in there. And then we'll take a little brief pause and, uh, and then we'll go into some jazz, which also is gonna be about love and all kinds of beautiful things and do some summertime. Everybody, everybody always wants me to do summertime, so I'm gonna do summertime. And then some other jazz standards and some of the some of the new crossover singles that I have uh, have done. This will be my first concert in which I bring those new pieces out. So I'm doing that and working with two of my dear friends who I adore. Uh, Grant Lonick from uh, Philadelphia. He's at Curtis and Opera Philadelphia, and 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 then my brother. You know, he's like my brother basically. He, is one of my best friends. He is like my Gail. We always call each other. Like he always says I'm the Oprah and he's the Gail, but he can be <laughs> Oprah and I can be Gail. It doesn't matter. But we are that close. We talk all the time and uh, he's just my confidant. But other than that, he's just truly an amazing artist and producer and all these things. So Nikai and I will do that second half. But uh, I'm going to sing Ombra My Fu. I know that everybody loves that too. And I love it. It's one of my favorite ones. And then some, some Du Park. Uh, and then some Margaret Bonds and, you know, Robert Morris and just all these beautiful pieces. I'm just looking forward to doing, doing it and coming and seeing and seeing all of you. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited. There are, there are quite a few songs on the first part of the program that you will be introducing to me. Oh, I, good. I knew a lot of them, but some of them I didn't know and I did my homework and all great. I'm, I'm really excited because you know, it's nice to have things that you know, but it's also great to hear some new things. Yeah. So uh, share with everybody a little bit about your sort of recent journey. Now, <laughs> um, I've been telling everybody, you know, it's so strange because we all have this shutdown and, 
and everybody's lives changed so dramatically and especially yeah. for opera singers it was huge oh, yeah. when when people everything shut down but you were very clever in yeah. how you shaped your time what so yeah. some people know but some don't tell us about that well i during the pandemic it was very interesting because right before or, or as it was actually happening and being established over in in the east um we were in production for eurydice at los angeles opera so we were doing the world premiere of matt o'coin's opera eurydice there and i can remember uh a week and a half this is to tell the whole story put the whole story in context like a week and a half up to up to the uh performance almost everyone in the cast got sick except for the three stones Everybody else was like deathly sick. I could, I've never been in a position where even when I'm sick where I can't sing, I've never lost my voice. I lost my voice like a week and a half before opening. Um, and so I think that we all had, you know, we had gotten sick. We didn't know what it was. I won't say we had COVID, but we got sick. Anyway, we fast forward. Um, I'm back home here in Appleton. And I'm lying in the bed and I get a phone call from, from Alex Fletcher saying, you're being called right now to go and sing Xerxes at Opera de Rouen in France. So I get on a plane to go there. Then, of course, F French is the one language that I really don't speak. I can get by, but it's not really great. <laughs> and uh, so then the president there, President Macron came on and said that, uh, it was going to be stopped all travel. And I said, I have to go home. So we go home. And I'll tell you how interesting it is, how God has always worked in my life. I come home, I'm quarantining, which was the most boring thing to do is, but at first. I mean, it still is, but anyway, I'm sitting in the living, in the, in the kitchen, because there's a bar there where I had started to have a happy hour every day. Uh, and I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> from the casting agents, producers, from NBC's The Voice. I'm not kidding, for the, for the last five years prior to when I got onto The Voice, I have been called or written an email every year, every six months. Are you sure you don't wanna do it? We really want you to do it, we want you to try. I'm like, okay, well, I can't do it because I'm busy. Then it's just the pandemic for some people was a blessing, but for many people it was not. You know, and I am so aware of that. I mean, I lost friends and everything. I've lost family members to it too. Um, for me though, it was a moment of like, oh, well, there is a chance I'm not doing anything else. Everything I was gonna be doing was canceled. So I thought, okay, I'll do the show. And mostly the reason why I did it is because I really love connecting with people. And I thought, how can I do that? I was being asked left and right and I'm happy that I was uh, to be doing like virtual concerts. So I was one of the singers that was okay. You know, I, I didn't really struggle too much during the, the pandemic because I'm also a professor and I was doing my, my uh, these virtual concerts. But when it came down to it really, I was like, I'm not doing anything and this is my way of connecting and let's do it. And also, my, my best friend Nikai and I practice like regret minimization. And one of the questions that you ask yourself is down the line, if I'm 50 or 70 or 90, would I regret not taking an opportunity that's in front of me right now? And if the answer is that you would regret it if you were 90, then you take the position right now. And so that was my thing too, because I didn't necessarily believe in the voice or know that it was good for me. I just thought, which I have my entire life in this way, I'll give it a try and see what happens. And look at what happened. I mean, I just, I was all over the world on TV and, and working with one of the people who I adore, John Legend is just fantastic. And he's a, a fantastic human being. Hello, Zeus, my dog is right here. Um, and, and taught myself so much more about what I was able to do. I thought I could do it before, but then actually going there and doing it, let me know that I really could do it and that I had the respect of so many in the industry. In particular, I would say that during that time of the pandemic and me being on the show, one of the things I was so proud to do that I didn't know what was gonna happen is that I united the opera industry. Like everybody got behind me, people who I didn't know. Like I had Christine Gerke, who I've never met in my life, 
Well, I've seen her once before, but we didn't talk to each other. I was very, very young and I didn't say anything. Um, but she was behind me. Then I met Sandra Radwanowski. Then I, then I met, uh, I'm trying to think, like all kinds of conductors, you know, who were just like, talk, Renee Fleming knows who I am, which I thought was insane. I, you know, th these are just, it was just really great to see that I gave people something to look forward to, which was really my goal was just to bring love. And I didn't know that I would be able to do it, but God said, you know what, just try. And uh, I'm happy that I did it. And it opened so many doors for me just in what was possible, you know? So now after that, this year, now that things have opened up, it's been, mm -hmm. when it <laughs> opened for you in a huge way, oh, with yeah. all this spectacular stuff with your, yeah. with the Met debut, uh, yeah. and yeah. a New York Phil debut. Uh, tell us what else is up with you. Oh man, it's incredible when you, when you begin to think about, I was just talking with, a dear friend, Melody Moore, who is, a, of course, a very fan, famous and fantastic soprano too, but, and even Jamie Barton, who's one of my really, really, really close friends that I talk to, because um, we're kind of similar. We always tell Jamie that, um, but it's interesting. I can remember a time in my life where I was like, oh God, you know, I'm going, and I still am like this, you know, and that's probably why, which is good. I'm not complaining about it. I'm so happy. Uh, but I would always tell God, I'm just going to leave my arms wide open and wait for the opportunities because I know that they're there. And it's akin to, you know, saying my plate is empty and then now your plate being full and then you're just getting plate, you know, plate after plate after plate and food after food after food. And so one of my other dear friends who I'm sure you feel the same way uh, about him as you do about me is Will Liverman. And Will Liverman and I were in Dallas together the first time we've been together in a show since we were apprentices together at Santa Fe. Um, he's the other person for me that I always thought I know he's going places. It, it's just beautiful. And I told Will, I said, you know, you get to the point where you were in our career and I'm so happy that I can even say this and I don't say it out of ego or pretension or to be pretentious, but I was like, you know, what do you do? And it was a very good question. I don't know why I can't, but I was like, but what do you start to do when there's overflow? I said, because I'm already teaching, I'm already giving, what do you do with the overflow? And so right now what I'm, what I am living in in my life is flow and the abundance of it. And the abundance of flow means that I have it to give to other people and to give to my students and my mentees. And so I definitely did my, my Metropolitan Opera debut. It was a long awaited debut. I was supposed to debut earlier, but that got canceled because of COVID. Um, and then the same week that I opened at the Met, I made my debut at New York Philharmonic with uh, Jeanette Sorrells doing the Messiah. Um, and then, um, then I think I took a break, <laughs> but I was actually working on, you know, during this entire time, I've been working on pop crossovers. Um, I got signed to a huge publishing deal with Downtown Music, which is the, which is the publishing um, company that houses all of Ella Fitzgerald and all the Gershwin Library, all these things, uh, Miles Davis. I mean, he's just an incredible, uh, incredible publishing company that I'm so proud to be with because I'm writing music too. Um, Let's see what else. Uh, I just, I, I went immediately from New York Phil back home for a little bit. Um, and then I went to uh, Salt Lake City to do the role of flight, which one day we're going to do, Kathleen, you and I were going to do one. It's become, it's become, it has become my, I've always felt it, even when we did it at Santa Fe, I've always felt so near and dear to it because of the, the other the other ring that happens in it. I've been othered a lot growing up, but um, did it in Salt Lake and then went from Salt Lake to home for like literally two weeks and then went from home to Dallas to do the role again. And now I'm in a little bit of a break, but I call it my 16 day break. And then I come, I go to New York to do a showcase for the industry, so for the pop industry and lots of big labels. Uh, then I come to, I go to Dayton, then I go back to New York for the Glimmer Glass Gala, then I go to London to the Barbican to sing the Vivaldi Stabat Mater, uh, and then I um, come back home, then I go to San Francisco to Opera Parallel to sing, and then um, I have a little break, then I go to make my, my, my debut, my, um, my, my debut at the Bayerische Staatsoper singing Nerone uh, in Agrippina with Joyce DiDonato, and 
Yestin Davies is in it and so many of my friends. And then after that, I'm coming back home for a little bit. Then I'm doing a concert at the Neue Gallery in New York. And then I'm singing Oberon at uh, the Moyen Metro Opera. I have to learn that. I'm still getting that in my body. But And then I'm getting married in July. So it's just like a lot. There's a lot going on. So you would you deserve this abundance. Thank you. Thank you. You deserve it. You deserve it. Um, John, I'm just so, so excited to have you with us. And oh. I know that uh, it will be an experience that everyone who's there will be talking about for a long time. I hope so. I absolutely. Hope so. Absolutely. So I'm excited to see you soon. And, yeah. um, and thank you for talking with me today. Oh, it is my, I love you, Kathleen. You know it. So I thank for you. I'm happy we found some time to do it. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for this conversation with the wonderful countertenor John Holliday. One of the things I love the most about opera is the communication between the performer and the audience. Uh, I know you're going to enjoy his concert and I look forward to seeing you at the Schuster Center on April 3rd. Thank you for your continued support of your Dayton Opera. Oh, <laughs> oh,